salvation, you know, you're really just calling on prayer of help me, help me see this differently. Uh, based on what I'm perceiving, I'm perceiving some differences here, I'm perceiving some things that, that are out of alignment with where my heart is. And, and the Spirit will say, yes, that's what, exactly what we're working on. Pay attention to your reactions, pay attention to your emotions, and we can work with that. We can take it in to this deep state of healing. But we, we, it's all perception is selective remembering. So when we're looking at a situation where we feel uncomfortable, we are perceiving aspects of our mind acted out in the characters. They're, they seem like they're whole characters with minds of their own, but they're actually just reflecting back to us thoughts that we still believe are possible. And in that sense, they're, they're oftentimes reflecting back unconscious beliefs and thoughts that we had pushed out of awareness. And then, you know, I always like, if you spot it, you got it. If you perceive it, you believe it. Uh, so if I have any kind of irritation, annoyance, upset, even an awkward feeling, a little low, a little bit of anxiety going on, it could be anything, mild upset, there's still a lesson for me in the sense that I'm still perceiving something that I believe is possible. The Holy Spirit is, is given the mission to show us what, who we truly are and how God created us. You know, show us the real world, show us the happy dream, purified of all these egoic judgments. So whenever it's, you know, if I see somebody and I think, well, they're just plain lazy. Well, what is lazy? You know, who created lazy? You think God sat around and was like, oh yeah, I'm going to make lazy today, you know? I feel like making lazy, creating lazy. You know, we, there's so many egoic thoughts that, that have to be raised up into awareness and handed over. So if I'm aggravated or annoyed that somebody's <coughs> lazy or somebody's bullying or whatever, then I, I bring it back into my mind. Like, for example, with bullying, maybe it's bothersome that one student can try to coerce or control either physically or emotionally another student. And then, I'm uncomfortable, I have to take a look at what are my beliefs about control. You know, what do I believe about control? Ultimately, the Course is teaching that the script is written and we're watching a prearranged script, just reacting and responding to aspects of the script that we think should be different. So if there's any kind of control or bullying that's still left in my mind, it's much safer to see it acted out in some characters than for the ego then to, f to face it. And, and the Spirit's like saying, no, if you still believe that there's control as possible in this world, then the characters will keep acting it out until you finally realize that it's not. That there is no control over this world. It's just a, a, a consciousness projected outward and, and we really have control over our state of mind, always. 100% control over our state of mind, but we really have 0% control over the world. That would, of course, bring you peace in relationships too. Imagine you have a partner and you begin to get the faintest glimmering that you have no control over your partner's behavior. Zero. Well, that'll take you into happiness in a hurry. Because the struggle comes in from believing that you do have control and that you can make a change. Oh, I'll change them for the better. Just give me about 50 years, I'll shape them around, I'll have them, I'll whip them into shape. And then after 50 years, you're pulling your hair out, going, ah! You know, because you're trying to go against, you know, a divine principle. Yeah. So much of our conditioning is, you know, trying to, you know, make the world live together in a happy way and smooth it over and, come on, let's work it out. And, I hate you, I hate you too. Okay, let's get together now, you know. It gets all social workers, everybody in psychology, helping professions, those are the frustrations. Ultimately, all of that is designed to start to realize that you have the answer inside your awareness. You have God inside your awareness, you know. But you can't 
search for the peace or the solutions in the projection. You have to go within the mind. You have to go inside into that stillness. And, and ultimately, if you have enough of this frustration of being, we'll call it the unhealed healer, where you're out there to help the world and save the world and bring peace to all nations and, you know, all very altruistic, wonderful and everything, you start to get so frustrated at the failure of that, whether you're a scientist trying to get uh, Iran to disarm, and they're saying, We're not, we, don't have any, we don't have any intention of blowing anything up, then the next talk will be, death to Israel, annihilate them. No, we're peaceful. We're just for peaceful energy. And you're, you're let's say, a scientist who's on the committee trying to get people to go in to verify what the level of the plutonium or whatever, eventually you come to a point where you start to go, wow, if I want peace of mind, I better start going into my mind to find it. Uh, because that's the only place I'm going to find it. <laughs> I'm going to find it into trying to get the pieces of the puzzle mm -hmm. to come a certain way. I, I can find it in there. I would say I was an activist. I was a, a frustrated activist. Okay, all right, I was an angry activist. Uh, and I was an angry peace activist. Uh, and, and not really recognizing the, <laughs> the contradiction in terms there for a few years, quite a few years, but, but then finally, you know, it starts to dawn where somebody comes up to you and goes, yeah, aren't you a peace activist? Yeah? Well, you're not really very peaceful. <laughs> you know, you, you start to have to take it in, you know, when, when the, the teachers start coming and start confronting you know, where is your mind? Where is your state of mind? And the Course is very helpful for that. Seek not to change the world, seek rather to change your mind about the world. That's beautiful. Oh man, if I had that teaching when I was like seven years old, <laughs> I could have huh. saved a lot of time. But it comes when you're ready for it to come. And, and you start, to, you're ready to hear it. You know, you have the ears to hear when your mind is kind of fed up with trying the other way, and trying ways that that just don't work, you know?